that you're supposed to be baptized if you've ever been told to. Sin. Not being baptized is a sin. It is not the unforgivable sin. That's all and the mean. presence of the Holy Spirit in a person is proof positive that he is saved. Romans chapter 8. But you can't separate baptism from the baptism of the Holy Ghost and baptism in water in Acts 10. We, we, <laughs> did separate, together. we did separate it by proving very carefully that they were saved already and spoke in tongues before they were baptized, which means they were already saved or they couldn't have had the Holy Spirit in them speaking in tongues. Unless you're willing to admit, that's the question, unless you're willing to admit that it's possible to speak in tongues exactly as, as the apostles and not be saved. Uh, the order you is, willing to admit that? The order is repent, be baptized, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The order was reversed in Acts right. chapter 10. You're right. Now, at that what means the order is? You, you're going to say that salvation occurs at the point of faith, but does it involve obedience? Does one have to repent? One can believe before he repents. Uh, is his salvation uh, authentic if he doesn't repent? Is his salvation authentic if he doesn't believe? Well, repent. James means, said yeah. that we'll show our faith, our belief, by our works. Yeah. The Holy Ghost which God hath given to them that obey him. Obviously, Peter gave something to obey. He said, repent. Be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, Peter didn't leave anything to speculation. He commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord, and they didn't say, oh, no. We, we, okay, we with agree with James, that. With James, he says, we will show our faith by our works. And what kinds of works does James talk about? James, in his entire epistle, doesn't talk about baptism. He talks about giving to the poor. He talks about taking care of widows and orphans. He talks about uh, just numerous in, in kinds of works. Passage. Now, now. You said we show our faith by our works. Now, which of those works are necessary to salvation? In the passage that you're quoting, he was not talking about doing good works. He was talking about the obedience that of passage, Abraham. That passage led into the entire that passage rest of the summed epistle up, of James. That passage summed up the obedience of Abraham, who believed God and it was accounted unto him for righteousness, but he obeyed God and offered Isaac. And the Bible says, then it was fulfilled that Abraham believed God and it was counted on him for righteousness. And I believe the salvation of anyone is fulfilled when they have obeyed the Lord. Amen. So you believe, you believe then, don't you, that, that baptism is the means, baptism as long as it's accompanied by real faith, not baptism of, a, of an unbelieving person who just makes a false declaration of faith, but baptism accompanied by real faith is the means of the remission of sins. Is that correct? <coughs> Ananias told Paul, Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. You'll notice that the uh, wash away thy sins is the past participle. It is having washed away your sins. How did he do it? At the moment of his faith. Arise and be baptized having washed away. Past participle. Why isn't it translated that way? You know, that's well, what, ask me, what, what, what translation is it look translated at Boyce, that way? Uh, look at Boyce Blackwelder's Light from the Greek New Testament, where he discusses the entire verse and shows you that that's the, ne the necessary implication See, of the past participle in that verse. What, what translation translates it that way? I don't know of one. I don't think so. I think... Um, <laughs> that's a, well, you see, that's our problem. What our problem is is this, that every time you quote scholastic sources, every time you quote Greek grammarians, this audience, largely men who are sympathetic to your position, just sort of, uh, grammar again, uh, scholarship again. Uh, why can't we just have the good old King James Bible? It was good enough for Walter? the Apostle Paul. It's good enough for us. No, we didn't Walter, say what about scholarship? Walter, yeah. Walter, the throw audience, scholarship into the ash can. Some of the audience uh, could be sympathetic with, with us. They came at their own expense. But the host of the show is not sympathetic with us. The one that determines the format, the questions that are asked, the sequence of the questions, and so on, and calls the end of it at the appropriate time after Walter Martin has had his last say, that person is not sympathetic with us. And if I had to make a choice, if I had to make a choice, I'd rather have the host with me than the audience because they're not participating. I don't, I don't really think that I have to Why say Why don't you let the host you? answer that one, okay? I have okay. To say, uh, if I was taking your side, then I suppose Walter Martin, because I took your side, could say the same thing. Because obviously I do have a position. I have opened up at the cost of maybe $100,000 to, 
to let you view your air, view your your ideas. All right. Was and I haven't purpose, asked purposely. Uh, were you altruistic? Did you feel that the United no? I believe Pentecostal in truth. I hope you believe truth yes. as well, don't but you? But did you feel that the United Pente Pentecostal Church <coughs> needs to have the opportunity to air its views, or did you feel that the United Pentecostal I think Church that the, I think needs that, to be publicly uh, censured? Yes. Let me answer that question. I think that by asking questions concerning the Bible and uh, the views, if the Trinity was the question at stake, which I believe it was, the verses that I asked all centered from the historic church all the way down, those verses have been labeled as part of that discussion. I don't see anything wrong if we're talking about, quote unquote, the Trinity, of going to the sources that the historic church, which you disagree with, have said this shows the Trinity. Now, I suspect that if I had given you a verse concerning the fact of, uh, of uh, talking about sanctification, that wouldn't have gotten us too far concerning the Trinity. I zero in because we have a high cost. Every moment that you speak costs us hundreds of dollars just for that moment to speak. Now, you're saying that the moments that you did speak, because Walter Martin and Cal, or I, said something back, that what you said doesn't make any difference at all. I have seen that repeatedly shown not to be true on this program by our viewers across this country. Uh, John. People will listen to what you are saying. Now, I have an opinion. And you're saying that I'm prejudiced by bringing up the very texts that center in on the Trinity. Which well, text did you want? It would want? have been nice if you'd have asked uh, a few texts from the Old Testament that, that do not bring up the Trinity. I opened fact, up one program it. that went for an hour and a half on the Old Testament. And when you fellows were the one, when I went back to Matthew 28, as the host of a program, I don't know any other host that would have sat here and let you say what you said and let you continue at my expense. Uh, John, we don't know 